Hi, Clark Otten with Southern Heritage Video Productions in Atlanta, Georgia. And today I want to talk to you about the psych wall that uh, we're building in our studio. We actually have, have built one already, the 40 foot long psych wall with a cove at each end. Uh, we're getting ready to build a 25 by 25 foot cove psych wall green screen. Uh, both of these walls are about 15 feet high and they're made up of frames built out of two by four. Now, you watch YouTube, you'll see a lot of different videos on how to build a psych wall. And basically they're all going to be the same. You're going to come straight down and you're going to have something that curves into the floor, giving you the loss of, of perspective. So we're doing the same kind of thing. Uh, we're using mason uh, yeah, masonite for our curve. I bought the white-sided masonite, sold at Home Depot and Lowe's and whatnot like that, designed to easy wipe down. You can use them for a whiteboard, in fact. But we're not using this as our white. We're actually flipping it over and using the other side. The reason I chose this particular product is it's a very dense masonite. It's flexible, but it's quite dense. If you use the softer masonite like you find in pegboards, it distorts too much with the changes in temperature and humidity and actually can get buckles in the wall uh, when the conditions get right and then actually shrink and start pulling on the screws when you have the opposite set of conditions. So I wanted something that was pretty thermally stable as far as dimensions go and chose this product. So what we have done is built up frames. These frames are 15 feet high, uh, four feet wide. These sheets come in four by eight sheets of masonite. And so we start with one piece coming down the wall. At the bottom of the wall, we have curved sections cut out of three quarter inch plywood. And of course the masonite is gonna to form to this curve and get mudded into both the floor and the sheet above it. So this is the basic format and what makes ours a little bit different. We built ours in these frames, these four foot wide frames with a two foot uh, foot sticking out of the front of it, designed so they, they could be built together as modular units. What we wanted was to be able to deconstruct the wall and take it out in basically uh, 15 foot tall sections, four feet wide, and still be light enough for two people to carry and load on a truck. Because at some point, we may want to move our psych wall to a different location. And this way it becomes portable. You don't have to take the whole thing apart. You break the mud at the seams between the panels and uh, carry each unit out, set it up in the new site, mud it back in and paint it, and you're ready to go again. We've spent about $3,000 in materials for the two psych walls that we have. And obviously, if we move into a bigger space, we don't want to just abandon all that. So the idea behind our construction design was to make it portable should we ever decide to move to a bigger location. This is a prototype of our original wall. It's kind of crappy looking because we were still figuring out exactly what we were going to do and how we were going to do it. But this is the general makeup. It's, of course, obviously taller, uh, the 15 foot sections are. But we have cross braces made out of two by twos. And we actually put uh, glue on all the surfaces, used a construction adhesive on all the surfaces, and then a nail gun to tap it into place so that you had glue and nails holding the masonite to the frames. As we got down into the curves, we found that the nails were not strong enough, and we finally ended up using um, Phillips head screws, drywall screws, and sinking them into the uh, masonite so that we could mud over the top of them as well. But this is basically the idea. Add a little more height to it, sheath it over with your masonite, and there's one modular unit. Pick it up, carry it away. Okay, so now we're in the cove of the white wall. Uh, this is the one that we've already finished. And if you walk around the backside with me, you'll see the same setup we just described a little bit earlier finished out. Now you'll notice that it's braced against the wall and our structures themselves are bolted to that brace to give it stability. 
To take this loose, all we have to do is walk our way down the brace, taking screws out of the panel, three screws for each one, and once again, uh, you've got a free unit that you can carry out and move to a new location. To light the psych wall, we've got units like this from Mole Richardson that has six light fixtures in it. We have them wired up so that you, every other light is on a circuit, so we can use half the lights or we can use all of the lights depending on how much light we need to bring to the scene. We have each one of these is 500 watts, so each one of these fixtures is, um, what's that make it, 500, 3,000, 3,000 watts, I can add. Uh, so we have 3,000 light, uh, 3,000 watt light fixtures running the length of the wall. And on the green screen, we'll also have some vertical fixtures on the edges standing to light it from the sides. So we'll have plenty of light on the green screen as well. But uh, these are mounted to the ceiling, not to the wall and give great light, as you'll see on the white wall in a little bit. Hi, Clark here again with uh, more on the psych wall. As you can see, uh, Danny and Paul have done a great job of framing it all out and skinning it with the masonite. You can see the curves here at the bottom where the masonite curves into the floor. And we're just about to come down to the corner, the last curved piece to here. This part's fairly easy, just making these cuts uh, consistently is part of the problem. But once we reach this point here, now we get into the difficult point that of all the videos we've looked at and the different instructionals we've watched, nobody's really covered how to do this part. And we're gonna show you how we did it. Found a method that worked out pretty well and I think you're gonna like it. All right, uh, now we're down to the secret of the psych wall corner, the part that's the most difficult. And what we've found is, I think, a simple solution, so especially for those of you who are not uh, great carpenters, which of course we aren't. Um, one way you could do this is put a number of ribs like this through and cut a bunch of pie-shaped pieces, but you're talking about a lot of precision, uh, measuring and precision cutting to get that job done. So what we've done is taken our uh, masonite, cut it into about uh, four foot wide strips, and I'm gonna put it up into the corner here, where it belongs, kind of flex it into position, and then take my pen and mark where it has to meet to both top and bottom. Now these won't be, let me slide that down just a little bit. That mark's gonna be right there. So the upper and lower marks are not exactly one above the other. They're gonna taper in as well, kind of a short piece of pie, if you will. And then we'll cut this and screw this in. What makes this hard is you have a compound flex that you have to deal with. You've got a flex like this, and you've got a flex like this. Well, that makes it hard to get one piece of, of material to flex in both directions because this piece would have to squeeze together, just actually shrink in size. So by coming down a step at a time and cutting these as a wedge shape, putting them in, uh, we can fill the hole pretty evenly. Then what we're gonna do, we've left a panel out, and we step behind, I won't go all the way behind right now, but we step behind and we take gaffer's tape and we put it between the different levels. We'll come back to that and just look at it once again, but that gives us something to mud against and close the back of the gap, otherwise your mud just keeps dumping out the back of the crack. So let's go cut this piece, we'll come back, screw it in, move on to the next one, and you'll see how do we, how do we accomplish this compound curve of the corner? All right, so now we're going to mark and cut this piece. Uh, we took our marks off of the wall, 
I'm going to draw a line between our two end marks. And you'll notice with this square, that's not a 90 degree angle. That is a uh, wedge shape that we're going to end up with. We'll do it at the other edge. This one's not as extreme, but nonetheless, it'll be wedge shaped. All right, you see this one's not quite as, as extreme as the other because this is the outside edge, if you will, going towards the wall. This is going into the curve. So here's our pieces. We're going to cut them off real quick. So we have our first wedge-shaped piece, so let's go back and put it into the wall. Okay, so now we're going to install this first piece, and we'll line the edge up here, fold it in, make sure we're close to our edge here, and what we want to do is try and make, okay, see so I'm a little far back, so I want to slide this piece back and forth until I get more or less as smooth as I can achieve matching these two curves. And then once I've gotten that in place and you notice we do have a crescent opening here that's unavoidable once we have that in place we're going to screw it in All right. and before I nail it down I'm going to check once again I've got this in as much as I can All right, so that's a pretty even match along here. And we're on our center line of our crescent down here. We're ready to measure our next piece. So once again, we're gonna take a piece a little longer than the space needed. Kind of match the sense of our curve above. Mark the top, mark the bottom, top, bottom. And sometimes it helps just to keep from being confused. Mark your piece which way is up. That way when you come back, you'll go, which way do I go? So, of course, once you try and put it in, it's easy to figure out. All right, so now we're going to cut another one and just work our way down the, the cove. 